Welcome back, Badger Buddies. Humans have been navigating the oceans for thousands of years, but we're not always good at traveling across the sea, and the ocean floor is littered with proof of that. With the advent of diving gear, present day humans have been able to explore the wreckages of the past. Here is the most priceless treasure ever found on sunken ships. Number six. About 20 years ago, a team of scuba divers were hunting for sea cucumbers. Huh, didn't realize sea cucumber hunting was a thing. <laughs> Not the most impressive prey in the ocean, but hey, whatever floats your boat. So this team is hunting off the Indonesian islands and were grabbing cucumbers left and right. They were even grabbing each other's cucumbers. What? And then, by complete dumb luck, they discovered Southeast Asia's biggest underwater archaeological find. It was the wreckage of an Arabian Dao from the 9th century. Dao's were sailing vessels that were typically used for trade. What the cucumber fanatics found was a Dao that was jam-packed with cargo. It had over 60,000 handmade items from China. There were Changsha tea bowls from the Tang Dynasty and hundreds of ink pots and jars. Some of what they found was in nearly perfect condition and looks like it was ordered from China for an opulent wedding in Indonesia. Everyone was so excited they started touching cucumbers. Pop quiz, hotshot. The most valuable wreckage ever found was from a ship, the San Jose, off the coast of Colombia. It's known as the Holy Grail of shipwrecks. How much do you think the contents of the San Jose are worth? See if you can guess the correct answer in the comments below, and I'll let you know later on in the video if you're right. Number five. Back in 1676, the Swedish had a truly prodigious warship. It was called the Kronen, and it was the literal flagship of the Swedish Navy. When the Cronin was around, it was one of the largest and most heavily armed ships on the water. This thing was a three-decker with 110 guns pointing in all different directions. Going to battle with this bad boy was enough to make anyone fill their poop deck. So how did it do in action? Well, during the Battle of Hollande on June 1676, while making a sharp turn under too much sail, the Kronen capsized. That's right, a left turn was what sunk Sweden's most impressive ship. During the capsizing, a gunpowder magazine ignited and blew off most of the bow and it was a picture wrap on the Kronen. The loss of the ship was a huge blow on the Swedes during the Scandinavian War. It was a big deal status symbol for the country, and to have it go down because of the pure ineptness of the crew was a tough Swedish meatball to swallow. Maybe the memory of the failures of the Kronen is why Sweden sat out both of the world wars. I mean, these conflicts are happening in your backyard. You would think you'd feel enough skin in the game that you'd want to get involved. Although they did let the Germans march through their country twice during World War II so that they could attack Norway and then the Russians and Finland, which in my mind violates their neutrality and isn't a very neighborly thing to do. But I'm digressing. What's cool about the wreckage is that it has been an absolute treasure trove of archeological finds. From gold coins and pharmaceuticals to brain tissue belonging to members of the ship's crew. Perhaps the most bizarre find is a sealed black jar with a substance that scientists can't even place. The archaeologists who discovered the substance say it smells absolutely rank, and the best guess is that it's a 340-year-old hunk of cheese. Research is ongoing, and scientists are preparing to cut the cheese. Number four. I'm king of the world! The most famous of all shipwrecks in the world has to be the Titanic that sunk in 1912 after it got rocked by an iceberg up in the northern Atlantic. The hole filled with water, the ship broke in two, a guy fell and hit the propeller. We all know the story. Well, the Titanic was filled with crazy rich people and it was carrying all sorts of luxurious goods on its way to America. It took over 70 years for explorers to find what's left of the wreck on the floor of the ocean. And they've been looting ever since. The wreckage is estimated to be worth a total of $200 million. Never let go. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notified of new videos 
and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number three. Back in 1857, the SS Central America and nearly 500 passengers set course for New York City from Cologne, Panama. The 280 foot long ship was loaded to the gills with nearly 10 tons of gold that was originally from California. On its way through the Gulf of Mexico, the SS Central America was pummeled by a giant hurricane. I guess they didn't check the AccuWeather forecast. The powerful winds decimated the ship's sails and tore up its hull. For two grueling days, the dauntless crew fought the relentless winds. Alas, on the second day, a hole in the ship's side filled with water and it began to sink. For over a hundred years, the SS Central America laid undisturbed on the seabed. In 1988, the Columbus American Discover Group, a team of archaeologists from Ohio, sent a remote operated vehicle through the area and discovered the old ship with all of its artifacts inside. Immediately, 39 insurance companies filed suits claiming that because they paid damages in the 19th century for the lost gold, that they had a right to it. Insurance companies are the worst. After lengthy legal battles, courts ruled that 92% of the gold would be awarded to the Discovery team. That gold is estimated to be worth $150 million. Number two. Coming in at number two is a find that has Greece and Britain at each other's throats. So back in 1801, Lord Elgin of England removed half of the surviving sculptures from the Parthenon in Greece. Elgin claimed to have obtained them through official decree by the government of the Ottoman Empire who at the time ruled over Greece. But Greece calls major BS on that and accuses Elgin of looting their iconic monument. It doesn't help Elgin's case that documentation of the decree has never been found. But back when Lord Elgin was transporting the loot, one of his ships named Mentor was scuttled by a storm. It didn't take long for the crates containing the sculptures to be salvaged, and now they are displayed in the British Museum in London, and the rightful ownership of the priceless artifacts continues to be a squabble between the two countries. Recently, archaeologists went back to the 200-year-old shipwreck to see if they could find any evidence that showed if Lord Elgin had taken any other artifacts from Greece. Turns out he did! This guy loved stealing from the Greeks. There are three ancient handles of Rhodian Amparas, which are like tall vases, and the guy had got his hands on other stone vessels that date back to the 3rd century BC. Doesn't bode well for his case that he had such sticky fingers. It's answer time. According to experts, the wreckage of the San Jose is estimated to be $17 billion in today's money. It was found in 2015 and was packed with gold, silver, and emeralds. The San Jose was transporting all these riches as part of the King of Spain's mission to loot the South American Spanish colonies as a way to fund the expensive War of Spanish Succession. The vessel was sunk by a British squadron on June 8, 1708. You don't want to tangle with the British on the ocean. They're like the Aquaman of Europe. Number one. Coming in at the number one spot is the SS Laurentic. This was a British ocean liner that was built in 1907. During World War I, it was converted into an armed merchant cruiser, but sank when it ran into two mines 25 miles north of the coast of Ireland. Here's what's troubling. At the time the Laurentic sank, she was carrying 43 tons of gold ingots. As you can see in this picture, the wreckage has been found and it doesn't look like the boat is in that bad of shape. The crazy thing is that to this day, the gold has never been recovered. The gold was kept a secret from the crew and was meant to be used to buy munitions from Canada and the United States. Shortly before the boat was hit by the mines, it made an unscheduled stop at the naval base in Vankrana, Ireland to allow four passengers who were suffering from yellow fever to disembark. Then it went about on its way and BOOM! German mines took it out. There are some that sense that there may be more to this story. That perhaps the unscheduled stop was a ploy created by an Ocean's Eleven style crew to get the boat to dock so that they could smuggle the gold off it. 
Then, as luck would have it, the boat sinks shortly thereafter, leading the world to believe the hall had sank with it. Maybe it's a masterpiece crime, or maybe all that gold is just sitting down there, waiting to be found. What do you think? 